Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate multi-level Poisson regression using Jamovi. So the data and the example are based on a presentation by Hawks in his 2010 book Multi-Level Analysis Techniques and Applications. Now before we get started let me know that you can download a copy of the data uh, by following this link right here and I'm going to make this link available underneath the video description. The data is actually contained in an SPSS file that can easily be read into Jamovi. Additionally, I'll include a link to a PowerPoint that contains more details regarding interpretation of the results. So probably more details that I'm going to really cover in this particular video presentation. So let's consider a research scenario and we are predicting the count of epileptic seizures of 59 patients over four consecutive visits to a clinic. So our level one outcome variable is going to be seizure, uh, which you see right here, and that is a frequency count for seizures reported at each of the four measurement occasions. So looking at the uh, this screenshot of the data set, we have a subject identifier, and you can see that the first four rows contain uh, values of one. This is basically person one in the data set. And then we have a count uh, uh, for uh, that person at each of four time points. So there's five at time point one, three at time point uh, two, three at time point three, three at time point four. So um, you can see then the next set of rows, we have person two with their respective uh, frequency counts for seizures as well. Now, the level one predictor variable that we're going to include is this visit variable right here, and that is reflecting time um, or measurement occasion. So uh, we could easily uh, kind of recode this into 0, 1, 2, and 3 for um, the four measurement occasions, but I'm going to leave this in the original coding from when I downloaded it, uh, the codes of negative 0.3, negative 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.3 respectively. Uh, the treat variable reflects whether an individual was uh, assigned to a placebo group that uh, the coding for that is zero or a treatment group which is coded one. So that's going to be a level two predictor in our model and we also have a second level two predictor which is this L base variable uh, that you see right here and so it is the natural log of a baseline count uh, and that variable has already been centered at its mean. Okay, so here we have our data opened up in Jamovi. Uh, we have our subject variable uh, right there, seizure variable, treat, visit, and uh, L base variable right there. Now, under the analysis tab, you should hopefully find uh, this icon right here for linear models. And we're going to use uh, this particular module uh, in order to perform our multi level. Poisson regression. Now if this icon does not show up that means that you're going to need to add that particular module. So you can do that by going uh, to the far right there's a plus sign underneath it it says modules. You, it's probably uh, going off the screen right there but I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus sign go to Jamovi library and you'll notice uh, as you scroll through it there should be general analyses for linear models in Jamovi. So uh, you need to install it. I've already installed it, so there's no need to do anything else with this. So we're going to go to Linear Models, click on Generalized Mixed Models, and at the very top, we're going to move, uh, we're going to actually click on Poisson because our dependent variable, our repeated measure in this case, um, is essentially a count outcome. So reflecting the uh, account of seizures uh, for uh, at each measurement occasion. So I'm going to move the seizure variable to the dependent variable box, the subject variable down to the cluster variables box. I'm going to move the treat variable to covariates box as well as visit and our L base variable right here. Just so you know the treatment variable is already um, a dummy coded variable. It only had two levels so it's perfectly permissible to include it in the covariates box. If we add more than two uh, levels um, then we would probably want to tr uh, include it under the factors box or if we just wanted to tr treat it as a uh, as a, um, a categorical variable then we could recode it and then include it in the factors box but we're going to leave it under covariates for this demonstration as we scroll down under fixed effects you can see each of the variables that we've included up to this point and uh, where it says effect size you'll see it says odds ratios uh, EXPB which is given right here. Technically uh, in the context of Poisson regression 
uh, the measure that we're going to see in the EXPB column in the output is actually incidence rate ratios. Uh, you can see we have a confidence interval that can be formed around uh, the incidence rate ratio and we can also uh, click on uh, for estimates right here so if we want 95% uh, confidence intervals around the um, the regression coefficients we can add that. Uh, scrolling down I'm going to select intercept and move it over to the random coefficients uh, box so we're going to allow uh, the intercepts to randomly vary across uh, individuals within our sample and additionally to keep our coding similar to uh, Hox's presentation I'm going to select none for each of these uh, predictor variables that are given right here now we'll say we're not following Hox's presentation exactly but um, there are a lot of similarities so now you can see to the right we've got various outputs. You can see at the top we've got model information that's given up here, various model fit indices, including uh, these two pseudo R square values that are given. So you've got marginal and conditional, and I'll talk about that shortly. We've got the AIC and BIC, deviant statistic, and so forth. Um, under model results, you can see that we have fixed effects omnibus tests so if we want uh, uh, these tests uh, to test each of the predictors in our model we can do that uh, most of the time I just drop down to the fixed effects parameter estimates table that contains our regression coefficients that's the estimates column we have our standard errors that are given as well as the Z values and P values are given you can see the 95 percent confidence interval that's formed around our uh, regression slopes you can see the EXP B column, this is the incidence rate ratio um, that's uh, reflected. And then you all also see that we've asked for 95% confidence interval for those incidence rate ratios. And then scrolling down, you can see in the random components table, uh, we have the st standard deviation and variance estimate for the intercepts. But you'll notice that the uh, variance estimates for the residuals at level one, both of those are fixed to one. And that's basically because our dependent variable in, this, uh, in our model is uh, not normally distributed. And so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in order to uh, talk about uh, our residuals at level one. Okay, so let's go ahead then and look at our output in a little bit more detail. So as I noted before, the R-squared indices that are provided, these are basically pseudo R-squared, so they're not computed in the same way that we may be used to with least squares uh, R-squared values. So that's hence uh, the term pseudo R-squares. So the marginal R-squared basically reflects a proportion of reduction in error as a result of the model's fixed effects. And then the conditional R-squared, which is given right here, uh, this is essentially reflecting the proportion of reduction in error as a result of both the fixed and random effects within the model. Now there's not a whole lot of documentation that I was able to find on these pseudo R square values, but I did find a couple of links that give you a little bit more description and then also um, uh, an example. Uh, so we could think about the marginal R squared though in the following way. We could say that our ability to predict the count outcome is increased by 56 percent uh, with the addition of the fixed predictors within the model. Now going back to our fixed effects parameter estimates table uh, right here, uh, the estimate column contains regression coefficients and they reflect the predicted change in log counts per unit increase on a predictor and that's controlling for the remaining predictors. The EXPB column that you see right here uh, refers to the incidence rate ratio for the predictors. So uh, we can say that uh, the IRR associated with a predictor indicates the multipl multiplicative change in the incidence rate per unit increase on that predictor variable. Now although the uh, in the estimates column this is referring to the predicted change in log counts uh, per unit increase on a predictor you can you can basically look at the signs uh, for these regression slopes and get an idea about uh, the incidence rate um, at different levels of the predictor so this treatment variable remember it's coded zero for placebo and one for treatment so this negative coefficient right here is an indicator that individuals in the treatment group generally exhibited a lower 
seizure incidence rate as compared to those individuals in the placebo group. And we do see that that predictor was statistically significant. With respect to the L base variable right here, you can see that we have a positive coefficient. We also see that it is statistically significant. And this basically indicates that individuals with a higher baseline uh, rate for seizures also demonstrated an increased uh, seizure rate over the study period. The last uh, predictor that we have right here, the visit variable, the, uh, we have a negative regression slope. You can see that we have statistical significance here. And given that we have this negative coefficient, this just indicates that uh, basically the predicted seizure rate for the individuals in the study was decreasing across visits. Now looking at our incidence rate ratios right here, uh, the incidence rate ratio for our treatment predictor is 0.715 and basically that indicates that the incidence rate for seizures in the treatment group was 0.715 times that the incidence rate in the placebo group. We can see that the incidence rate ratio for the L base uh, variable right here is 2.748 and that would indicate that for every one unit increase on the L base uh, predictor, the incidence rate for uh, seizures increased by a factor of 2.748. The uh, incidence rate ratio for the visit variable is 0.746, which again, because this value is less than one, it essentially uh, indicates that the incidence rate is decreasing across visits within our study period. Okay, so once again, I do want to draw your attention to the random components table. Uh, as I noted before, there is no level one variance estimate. So these values are fixed at one. The only variance estimate in the model is at level two. And in this case is for the uh, variance uh, concerning the intercept. Finally, uh, just uh, as a heads up, we're not going to go any further in terms of uh, demonstrations, but I do want to mention that uh, as with other multi-level uh, designs, uh, we could theoretically allow uh, slopes, level one slopes to randomly vary uh, and then model um, the correlations between random intercepts and random slopes if we want to. Um, but we're not going to, again, we're not going to do that in this particular video. Uh, but again, additionally, you can also model within and cross level interactions with Jamovi as well. So um, that pretty well concludes this video demonstration, and I appreciate you watching.